What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew to discuss the most anticipated games of the month of August. And in this video, we're going to give our preview of the games that we think that you should have on your radar. Some games you probably have already heard before and some games you probably have never even even had an inkling about. So we're going to give a deep dive into the games we feel as if you should know about. And we're going to be talking really first about the list of games that we've seen. And this is not the entirety of all the games coming out in August. There's a lot of games dropping, um, but this is just kind of a general list that we've seen. I'll talk about what games there that are coming out and also the platforms in which they are arriving on. Um, so let's start off with the main, the biggest titles, probably one of the most known Baldur's Gate 3 is arriving on PC first on August 3rd. Um, I think it, yeah, I think it's going to be August 3rd and then PS5 is arriving September 6th. There's no date yet on the Xbox Series X or S versions. I know that they've been, that was a big point of contention right now. I think the biggest issue right, right now is with the Series S and seeing whether they can have that, that co-op uh, added on with the size of the game itself, which is massive. Uh, we have Tower of Fantasy arriving on PlayStation 5 and PS4 uh, and this, the, the, the PC port arriving on August 8th. We have Atlas Fallen, which is PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, arriving on August 10th. Stray, which is getting its Xbox port from PlayStation, finally arriving. You can now go pet cats or get pet by robots when you're a cat on uh, August 10th. Moving out to on the, P uh, on the PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, all the consoles really, and including the Switch on August 15th. We have Vampire Survivors, which is a Switch port, arriving on August 17th. And the coveted Madden 24 arriving on all consoles except for the Switch on August 18th. Oh boy, it's gonna get it's gonna get rowdy in here. The Texas Chains Chainsaw Massacre arriving on the next gen consoles. Um, I think for this is supposed to be dropping in late August. I, I think the official date is the I think it's the 20, at least the 21st, I think, for this one, but I could be wrong there. Uh, Immortals of Avenum is on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X, which is the next-gen games, uh, next-gen consoles on August 22nd. Armored Core 6 is another major game with the Fires of Rubicon, arriving all on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, and on, uh, on Xbox is the August 25th. Daymare 1994 Sandcastle on, on uh, PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, and Xbox on August 29th. And More Hospital on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X on August 31st. But it's not just them. We also have some indie games that are dropping. We'll we'll give a kind of a quick list of these as well. Stray God, um, it's a role playing musical, is dropping on all consoles August 10th. Hammer Watch 2 arriving on all consoles August 15th. Book of Hours only on PC August 17th. Bomb Rush Cyberpunk, very interesting game. We'll be talking about that one later on PC and the Switch. Very different on the ports there. August 18th. Blasphemous 2 on the next gen and on a Switch on August 24th. See Stars on PC, Switch, Xbox Series S, S and X, and the PlayStation uh, you know, consoles August 29th. And Goodbye Volcano High, PC, PS5, PS4, August 29th. And WrestleQuest is actually a very interesting game. PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox and the Switch on August 8th. And there's a lot of games. I mean, there's a lot more that are dropping in August. Surprisingly, generally, when you think about the time period, and maybe it's not surprising, but as we're getting into that fall fever, that's when the games start to really, really drop off. And August is that really that interesting month because a lot of times summer games don't really land. Or you get some really good sparks of summer games, but August is that in-between period where the summer and fall are finally hitting and you're starting to see that come into fruition with all the major games dropping throughout August. And September is also going to have a lot of big ones too. But let's talk about the most anticipated games. And these are the games we feel like a lot of people have either heard of before, but we are going to pick kind of the ones that you should definitely be looking for. And we're going to give a deep dive into them. And I'll start with mine. Baldur's Gate 3, obviously, is a very interesting tale. You have, firstly, a the PC version is going to be arriving very soon in, in August. Um, August week. next week, August 3rd. Not this week, August 3rd. Yeah, August 3rd. And... And you have a PlayStation version coming out September 6th with and it's it's essentially dropping nearly the same week as Starfield, um, which is pretty outrageous. when You think about the size of the games that we have here and with no Xbox version in sight so far that that gets a lot of people interested about this game because of 
how much you can do. And I think that's really the biggest thing that Baldur's Gate is always known for. From the creators of Original Sin 2, it is set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. And I think what's great about this, this title, is there is the unlimited amount of customization and what you can do in it that just gets you excited to just make your own character and play. I think that's one of the most biggest appeals that Baldur's Gate has. And it's becoming way more like more way more people are, are becoming interested in it because of just think about the kind of the genre of games in which Baldur's Gate is right. Everyone's been clinging to that that open world that you know story driven customization style of games for a while now. And I feel like Baldur's Gate really hits that on the head. You have twelve classes you can pick from, eleven races. You can basically create your entire identity. They have like uh, I think roughly around like seven origins you can pick from. Um, that you can kind of pick and mix and match and do all these different things. And I think one of the best parts about this is that it's co-op. And I know on the PC version, I really it's it, it's not going to be a, be a ability to be co-op on PC. I, everything I've ever heard oh, on split co -op. screen. Yeah, yeah, on, co -op. yeah, yeah on, on couch co-op. You can play multiplayer online yeah. up to four people, mm -hmm. which is probably the best part about it. You can create your own party and form up a squad and go about your entire venture together, which is always encouraged in Dungeons and Dragons. That's like the whole premise of it. Um, but split screen co-op where, where that function by itself has been thrown out the window in gaming. It's it's it used to be a function every game had. Now it's gone. And now you see Baldur's Gate being as massive as it is, is allowing for for split screen co-op, which is outrageous. Um, but yeah, having that bring in here is, is pretty crazy. But the, the game itself is at roughly what? One hundred and what? Twenty gigs, 22 uh, gigabytes, 122 wow. gigabytes of size <laughs> is massive. That's bigger than call, any Call of Duty game. I know Modern Warfare was like the closest one we had. It was 102, I think, gigabytes for Modern Warfare. Um, but you can tell based on the size of the map, the way the game works. It's a turn based game using AI and using the stats of your character as long as as well as rolls like it's almost it's like rolling a dice to see the likelihood of you hitting certain moves that you're trying to do or certain actions there's like dungeons and dragons and i think that's really where a lot of this comes into play because there's not just that there's weapons armors customizations sub races within the races 600 spells that you can learn like wow. like and apparently there's 174 hours of cinematics that were filmed for this game because the amount of choice that you have is outrageous and this game reminds me of the witcher when it comes to the amount of different outcomes you can get and actions you can do to change the game i don't even the witcher wasn't to this size and i think that is what's outrageous is that this is going to be setting itself to be a massive game and the fact that you're getting this game alongside starfield in that same week for for console gamers is massive but for pc players you get to play this a month in advance and if you got the gig space this is definitely a game you should be looking out for. So that was my game. I know it took a lot of time here, but uh, Frank, what do you think for your most anticipated game that you would have here? Yeah, so I have a quick list of, I'm going to go through about uh, five of those games. And I know Hockey's going to talk about the big one from From Software. So I'll leave that one off the list. But let me just give quick notes about a couple games uh, from that list that Mars mentioned that I have my eyes on. And the first one is Gord, right? Coming out. August 17th for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X at $34.99, the digital version, $39.99, the physical edition. And this is published and developed by Team17 and Covenant.dev, which are former CD Projekt Red developers. Mars mentioned Witcher. Some of the Witcher, former Witcher developers, worked on this game, and this is a single-player strategy game, settlement-building survival game, kind of like The Sims, right, but in a creepy unforgiving slavic fantasy setting right so you're in control of a village and its inhabitants and there's four different aspects of this game it's survival where you're building your town and defending against enemy tribes monsters and even some mythical creatures you have quests that are outside of the settlement you have a sanity system so not only do you have to protect the villagers uh physical health but also their mental health in this tough environment and they also have faith and in incantation so there's gods in this world that you can cut deals with to give you special abilities this looks like a very difficult game um, but the good question i have about it is the ai which was a little bit buggy on some of the previews they need to make sure that's good atlas fallen is another one you mentioned mars august 10th release date for pc ps5 and xbox series x this is a 59.99 game on console developer by deck 13 published by focus entertainment action adventure rpg 
this is a thing you can play it as a single player but also online co-op which you mentioned we're a big fan of co-op games in a cool looking desert environment stories about 15 to 20 hours long uh, with up to about 30 hours of complete content and including main story and side content and a lot of customization you can change dyes colors upgrades battle arsenal this was originally supposed to be released in may got pushed back because of some performance issues so did they work on the performance that's another big question we mentioned madden 24 mars on the 18th 70 dollars game for the standard edition 99.99 for the deluxe edition so you get those mud points um not a lot of difference but there is added mini games just coming back for training camp um i know we used to be big sports fans mars and we've kind of died out because of the ugliness of the sports game so maybe madden can hit here you have the texas chainsaw massacre game mars which is a 3v4 uh multiplayer game which is pitting the uh it's pitting four victim versus three members of the slaughter family so kind of like the Dead by Daylight game. So that's something to keep. And finally, Immortals of Avium. And this is a big one to, for me. Coming out August 22nd for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. This is a $70 game. It's coming out um, by Ascendant Studios, which is under EA. And this is from the creative director who worked on the original Dead Space and some of the Call of Duties from Sledgehammer. So, um, you know, this is a from come from a group and the director has some experience with well-known games 20 25 hour story game this is a mad first person magic shooter so we don't see a lot of magic games it was a first person looks like a shooter game but it's really about magic and this is about a battle between different mages and uh again you're, you're following a protagonist named jock and there's more than 25 spells 80 talents so you see there's a lot of some good content here but the question is from all the previews i've seen gameplay looks a lot of fun but the narration and the dialogue is very cringy. So we're gonna see about that one, but those are kind of my quick list guys. Um, and I'll pass it on to Haki to talk about the big the big one from From Software. Yeah, Haki, you're, uh, you know, all of our band favorite From Software studio is coming back at it. Not with an Elder Ring expansion, but with a robot game. So tell us about <laughs> your pick here, Haki. <laughs> What's your most anticipated game? Yeah, and I'm sure you guys will have uh, something to say as well uh, at the end. But yeah, it's Armor Force 6, so it comes out uh, August 25th, just like uh, Marsman had said. This is a single-player game. You know, it's rumored to be 50-plus hours. And if you look at Elden Ring, I mean, Elden Ring pushed people to hundreds of hours, including myself and and you know probably most of the Marsman crew. So 50-plus hours doesn't seem bad at all priced at $60 and then the deluxe version is $70. Now the last time that uh, Armor Core was in the spotlight was actually over a decade ago so kind of a long time coming. We'll kind of see what they have when it drops. It's a mech based action game. It kind of follows that mission boss setup where uh, you know the player goes through the mission and at the end fights a big boss. Now there will be side missions as well, and once you complete, uh, you know, missions and beat the main boss and the side missions, you can then upgrade your mech, which is going to be a huge part uh, of the game. Now the big difference is going to be uh, this is not an open world, all right. So the areas with inside the mission. Uh, are going to be fairly big, which is going to allow for kind of uh, strategic differences in the way that uh, players will attack, you know, the level or bosses or enemies. So there's going to be some differences there, which is awesome. And one thing I definitely want to mention is this is not going to be an easy game. From Software is known for making it uh, almost hellish to play their game. So this is kind of going to be like Elden Ring, but with robots, kind of like Mars said. So uh, you're going to have to upgrade your mech. Uh, you're going to have to change up your strategy, but the open-ended combat looks pretty awesome in this game, uh, and it's just going to be um, used for a diverse uh, you know, way to play the game, which I think is going to be awesome. So uh, in the end, I really uh, am hyped for this game. At the beginning, I was not. I was a little weirded out with robots and stuff like that, but we're going to see the gameplay on IGN that I saw on YouTube uh, was unbelievable, so we'll see. Hey, listen, uh, From Software has always been a pretty reliable studio that has been developing some bomb ass games. Like, they've always been consistent of making good games. I haven't seen a bad game from From Software. So, even with this being a change up from their normal formula of Souls like games, Armored Core could be a major hit. And I think they have a lot more like dedicated fans that will play this, and a lot of new people will look at it and say, hey, you know, let me try this out. And I think that will be yeah. something interesting for sure. But 
uh, it's, like like a, it's like a legit Gundam game that we've never received in yeah, a long time. Seriously. And and with that being said, we let's talk about the most anticipated indie games. And I feel like a lot of times people don't really look at indies as being like the same level, obviously, as these major drops. But I feel like indie games always try to they don't feel like they're more emotional. They feel like they're more like with love developed by these by these developers because they put a lot more time into them because they are obviously more it's more smaller right they're more like independent so when i'm looking at my most anticipated indie game and this is a game that a lot of people actually have been really excited for if you look at a lot of lists on most anticipated games of august this will actually drop in one of the top five and everything i've seen and that's bomb rush cyber funk and this the reason why i i really was excited about this game is because it is a kind of spiritual successor to jet set radio and although a lot of people have been itching for a remake of that game or a in another installment of Jet Set Radio. And granted, I think like, uh, you know, Jet Set Radio is kind of like a smaller title when you think about the overall landscape of like how, how many people played it. But it still is one of those games that a lot of people know because they grew up playing games like this. And basically it's, it's identical. It's actually made by the same people who made Jet Set Radio, Team Reptile. They are rumored to be making a remake of the classic jet set radio but in the meantime it seems like they're making the spiritual successor and seeing how this game drops is going to be kind of a, a good indication of whether they will continue making another installment of the game or maybe going back to that original uh you know original series that made them so so well known but what tells me is is that they are trying to make this as similar as possible to the classic series by bringing in some classic people that had worked on the old games as well like for example the famous composer hideki nagamura he was working on the music from the original games. He is now making a full full soundtrack for this game too, which I know a lot of people are excited about. It's very similar to the gameplay mechanics. You're doing tricks, you're doing combos, you're painting graffiti, you're going after the police, you're doing like everything that like a classic skater game kind of mentality that it was. Very similar to Jet Set Radio. Um, and the basic story is that Red, who's the main character, got had his head cut off and replaced with a robotic head. Uh, and now it's up to you and your and your crew to basically find out what the hell's going on and why is this happening to you? And it's a very like you know like cool little story, a little small story. Um, but the art style of it, I think, is very interesting. Reminds you a lot of Jesse Radio. So I know a lot of people are excited about that. I know I am. It's hitting at forty dollars, so it, it it definitely is going to be not a full fledged seventy dollar game or sixty dollar game. It's but it's not going to be a size of like. A smaller title like like cuphead being a 25 dollars it's going to be more than that so there was not a lot of information about the amount of hours that would take to make the, for this content for this game but 40 dollars seems like a pretty sound sound number we got to see what happens when it does drop should be interesting for sure but uh hockey what is the most anticipated indie game that you are are excited about yeah, so I have Blasphemous 2, which comes out August 24th. Now, this is a single-player game. Uh, now, Blasphemous 1 was about 13 hours for the uh, for the full game and pushing 28 hours if, if you're going to complete everything. So uh, we're going to assume that it's probably going to be around that as well. Now, the pricing was a little weird. I kind of had to look it up, and I kind of want to get your guys' uh, you know take on this. So the digital was 30, physical was 35, and the Switch was 40. So the Switch was more than the other ones. Does that happen every now and again? I've never really seen that before. No, see, I, that's the thing. They, that doesn't really happen often. I know a lot of people were debating on digital should be cheaper. So mm -hmm. I I wouldn't be against the idea of doing that because it makes more fiscal sense. Like you charge more for physical copies. You have to pay the people that make them versus digital is all solely by the publisher. So, I mean... It makes sense. I mean, I haven't seen this. That really doesn't really happen often. Usually they yeah, just, charge I, one I, price. I felt, it, I felt it weird that the Switch was more than, than the other ones, like more than the... the you know what, though? Because it's a yeah. micro SD card, basically, is what the Switch cartridge is. Gotcha. Maybe they're so going to... That's the reason why. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, so getting back to the game, it's a, a side-scrolling action platformer. You're going to be slashing through enemies and kind of completing puzzles as you go throughout each level. Uh, it's also sort of like a Souls game where it's a little bit dark. Um, as well as it, it's a pretty difficult game uh, from, from all the previews that I watched as well. So, um, you know, you're, you're going to have to take your time. You're going to, you know, have to have patience and kind of stick with it. 
Um, the other cool thing that they did was they actually added uh, three new weapons. So instead of just using one weapon, you can kind of uh, choose which one that you like to use and, and go through the level. So they have a slow but powerful weapon called the War Sensor. They have a fast class. We're going to be uh, kind of dual wielding uh, a dagger and a rapier and then kind of a middle ground weapon uh, really balanced out calling the uh, it's called a praying blade, kind of hard to say, but uh, all of these weapons are going to be um, able to have a skill tree that you can upgrade uh, and they all have advantages and disadvantages as well. So it's going to be a pretty cool game to try out. Uh, like I said, it's only going to be 30 bucks, so I'm probably going to uh, take a look at it. And one of the other things that I wanted to highlight is the art. The art of this game looked very, very impressive. So I definitely want to get into it and, and see how it plays. Yeah, man. Very interesting. And, uh, and Langella Kill. What is the indie game you are most excited for here? Yeah, I think this is another highly anticipated indie game. Sea of Stars coming out August 29th for PC, PS5, uh, Switch, Xbox Series X. Um, this is, I believe, a $39.99 game. I looked on the Nintendo shop, and then when you you know saw it earlier, and then when I went on it, it, it took the price down. So I'm not sure what the final price is going to be, but a really interesting note here. going to be on Game Pass and PS Plus day one so that's one of the first games that i can recall unless you guys can that both on ps plus and game pass day one which is pretty interesting um, but this is a retro style turn-based rpg game so we're going back in time and we're following two magicians here and this the kind of similar game style to super mario rpg so that was something that really intrigued me and another big thing a lot of people have been impressed and even i did was some of the music and this is from a famous developer uh music developer that did uh, chrono trigger and xeno uh, blade franchise so this is an emphasis on gameplay right timing hits multi-character combos strategic uh strategic lock system so this is going to be an rpg style game they had three characters in the demo which you can download now so i would definitely uh if you want to test it out you can absolutely do that i think there were six playable characters um for the full game when i went on but this is a big emphasis on again the gameplay turn uh turn-based game style and also traveling wandering sailing fishing cooking so it's a really charming looking game only question i have is this turn-based game is not a normal turn-based game where you just do one move and then they counter right there's multiple aspects to the turn base so it could get a little bit harder for some new players to get used to but it looks like a very charming game and i'm excited to test it out yeah and see if sea of stars is definitely one of the games i saw a lot of people were excited for um because it does remind them a lot of the classic like final fantasy rp like rule uh, turn-based games and the fact that like uh, xenoblade chronicles um you know you know pulp developers that were part of that game had is now on this game definitely gets people excited and i mean i'm trying to think about other games that have tried to do the drop on both streaming and uh, stream services but services um yeah. i i don't know if stray is going to be on game pass or not but that would be the only one in recent i know it's yeah, coming out this like month day one right like those are yeah. timed right so like at the same time that's the one thing i have i can't recall yeah that that is a good question i have to look that might be a trivia question you can see in the uh in the comments below if you want if you guys know that but that's going to be it our, for our August preview games for the month. And obviously, we have a lot of games that we can get to talk about. But what games are you interested or excited to play for the month of August? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And until next time, this is Mars Band signing off. Peace out, guys.